and another 10 out of 10 CVE just dropped. This time, it affects firewalls, which is quite wild, and people at Palo Alto Networks have scurried to patch this as it was a zero-day vulnerability. We'll get into what that means and get into an analysis of what happened, but this is wild. This is about the third big 10 out of 10 CVE in the last month following the XZ hack and a Windows vulnerability in many programming languages. This one here with over 48,000 people reacting has to do with a command injection vulnerability in the Pan OS software and allows attackers to execute code with root privileges on affected firewalls. For those of you unaware of Palo Alto Networks, it's a leading cybersecurity company who specializes in firewalls and cloud security solutions. Its flagship is something known as NGFW or the next gen firewall and it incorporates features like user identification, applications being aware of threats, and finer controls over network traffic. This allows big organizations to enforce very strict security policies. So you can see the irony in this one as their firewall software that was used in an organization meant to safeguard and protect other companies against cyber attacks. That's why this was a big deal. The executive summary really boils down to a critical command injection vulnerability in the Pan OS software. Again, an attacker can execute any arbitrary code with the scariest part, root privileges on the firewall. It has a CVSS score of 10. And what's even more wild, some of these affected Pan OS versions of the firewall, particularly for Global Protect Gateway and Global Protect Portal, as device telemetry does not seem to be playing a role in whether or not you are exposed to these attacks. Originally, and ironically, it was thought that enabling device telemetry on these devices was actually enabling the vulnerability, but that doesn't look to be the case, at least mentioned here. Now, there's a fantastic analysis that we're going to get into, so you definitely want to stick around as Velixity really dives deep into this zero-day exploitation, which they call a zero-day exploitation of unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability in Global Protect. But first, we need to figure out what a zero-day vulnerability is, for those of us that don't know. It's a security hole in a computer system unknown to its owners, developers, or anyone capable of mitigating it. Until the vulnerability is remedied, threat actors can exploit it in a zero-day exploit or zero-day attack. Meaning, the particular exploit here can actually be used because there's no patches available to fix it yet. Because the developers themselves didn't even know it existed until the zeroth day. And on the zeroth day, if someone wanted to exploit it, they would be completely capable of doing so. That's why zero days are particularly bad and probably one of the reasons it's got a 10 out of 10. Even on Hacker News, Palo Alto Networks releases urgent fixes for exploited Pan OS vulnerability and America's Cybersecurity Defense Agency released guidance for the vulnerability. They explain how Palo Alto Networks has released a workaround guidance for the command injection and it urges people to review the security advisory and apply current mitigations ASAP. And that's all until the actual fix is made. Additional resources include what we were seeing before, the, the threat brief, and then the second one, which is the Velocity breakdown. And what's wild about this is Velocity actually identified the zero-day exploitation of the vulnerability found within the Global Protect feature of Palo Alto Network's Pan OS at one of its network security monitoring customers. That's right. The threat research team, Velocity, found this, and they do a great breakdown of timelines and what actually exists as far as a potential backdoor into customers' firewall devices. But the wildest part of this is the way it was found is because there was suspicious network activity as this attack vector was trying to be used. That's how it seemingly was found here. So let's get into the timeline and reporting on this. But before we do, make sure to smash that like button if you enjoy reviewing and analyzing these types of threats and security vulnerabilities in the cyberspace. There are even concerns at this point from communities. Maybe it's it's another state-sponsored threat. And people are starting to really note the rising numbers of vulnerabilities and are definitely concerned about the impact of cybersecurity. If we're getting 10 out of 10s almost on a weekly now, things are getting pretty bad. But let's continue here. I'll definitely make sure to post a link to this blog in the comment section below because you should definitely check it out. It's a beautiful analysis on everything that happened. Velocity really broke things down. It'd be a shame if you didn't see it. So make sure to look for it down there in the description. But let's go through the timeline now. 
So March 26, 24, the initial successful exploitation attempts at multiple organizations. Yes, that's right. The attack vector was actually used on multiple companies. And on March 27th, a day later, follow on successful exploitation attempts at multiple organizations. Again, they're seeing attacks on multiple companies. UTA 0218 attempts and fails to deploy upstyle backdoor on customer's firewall device. So UTA 0218 is just... So UTA 0218 is what they're just labeling the attacker as. Veloxity then observes the same character trying to exploit firewall devices to successfully deploy malicious payloads, notifies Palo Alto Networks. A day later, on April 11th, Veloxity observes a second compromise. Palo Alto Networks publishes an advisory for the CVE that we're talking about. Finally, a day later, Veloxity publishes its findings. Quite an interesting timeline as we understand that this particular vulnerability was being exploited. And after successfully exploiting devices, the hacker downloaded additional tooling from remote servers they controlled in order to facilitate access to victims' internal networks. That's pretty wild. Could you imagine these organizations getting their internal networks breached? But there's quite a breakdown on the payloads that were used to actually create a backdoor. And we'll go briefly through this. But in simple terms, the hacker group of hackers here, UTA0218, they downloaded a program called Upstyle onto the computers, but they didn't succeed. However, a Python script that they tried writing would create a backdoor in the following location and import itself as a encoded blob. This extension was then used to create additional paths to a Python module. And anytime import was called on the Python module, it created a file and any other code on the device attempted to import this module would execute the malicious code. The commands were actually forged by the attacker by requesting a non-existent web page, which contains a specific pattern. The phrase existed here in a log file, which would look for a certain pattern, parse, decode it, and execute any contained command within it. It was then added to a CSS file, which was actually part of the firewall located here. It's a bootstrap file, which is a framework used by many to lay out front ends for web dev. Anyways, after the code was basically concatenated, to the CSS file and execute it, it would restore its state to the original file. So we can see here the upstyle main loop, which looks like for line in this error log, look for particular ignore errors, read the lines, search for shell patterns, and then if you find the shell patterns, you're gonna create a write flag to write this out as a command. It's gonna take the blob of code and try to execute it on the system as a root user. Quite insidious. And here's the overall workflow, again, given by Velocity. Fantastic analysis and summary here of the zero-day vulnerability. Even our firewalls don't seem to be safe, which is kind of humorous. It's one of the first lines of defense when it comes to our networks and cyber attacks. If they're not safe, what is? The irony is high with this one. And the breakdown here is a web request was made, get a specific pattern. 404 status was made, which would say adding command to error log. So once the command was added to the error log, then the Python script would try to read the error log. After the Python script tried to read it, which you can see the malicious code exists in, the error log would then try to retrieve commands via pattern. Then we move over to this other side where the actual system would try to decode and execute the command. Then the command output would be relayed back to the Python script. After that, we would save the command output to a file. It's that bootstrap framework file which is included in all bootstrap built front ends. After it was saved in the bootstrap min file, the hacker could then retrieve the results via getting the bootstrap min CSS. Then some cleanup was done. We would remove the command from the log file and wait 15 seconds to restore the original CSS file. Quite fascinating how they did this and also a very intricate system in order to pull all of this off as this zero day vulnerability was particularly dangerous because it was clearly being exploited before the developers even had a chance to address this security issue. This one was definitely a wild ride. I love the breakdown. Again, check out an even more in-depth breakdown in the description below. Let me know what you're doing to protect your own firewalls, routers, and networking systems. They don't seem to be safe as well, especially if organizations are getting hacked over production-based firewalls. Let me know if you enjoy this type of content by subscribing below. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, 
and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.